الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأصلي وأسلم على من بعث رحمة للعالمين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد We're going to start the kitab القواعد الأربع Four principles and we will finish them all in one sit بإذن الله الكريم the author of the book is Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad ibn Abd al-Wahhab. Now write. His name, first of all, he was Shaykh al-Islam, al-Allamatu al-Hummam, al-Mujaddidu li-Din al-Islam, al-Imam, Abu al-Husayn. That was his kunya, Abu al-Husayn. His name was Muhammad. So his kunya was what? Abu al-Husayn. Muhammad. Ibn Abd al-Wahhab, Ibn Sulaiman, Ibn Ali, Ibn Muhammad, Ibn Ahmed, Ibn Rashid, Al-Wuhaybiyu, Al-Tamimiyu. So his kunya was what? Abu al-Husayn, one. So that's his kunya. What was his name? Muhammad. Muhammad. Good. What was the name of his father? Ibn Abd al-Wahhab. His grandfather? Ibn Sulaiman. Great grandfather? His great great grandfather, Ibn, Ibn Muhammad again. Ibn Sulaiman, Ibn? Ibn Sulaiman, Ibn Ali, Ibn, Ali. Ibn Muhammad, Ibn, Ibn Ahmed, Ibn, Ibn Rashid, Al Wuhaybiyu. He's from the tribe of the people of Wuhayb. At Tamimiyu. So he's from the people of Bani Tamim. Um, He was from the tribe of what, Bani? Tamim. Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim both narrated on the authority of Abu Huraira that Abu Huraira said, La azalu, I don't remain except loving the people of Bani Tamim for three things that I heard from the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sami'tu, I heard Rasulullah, the Messenger of Allah, saying, Hum ashaddu ummati ala dajjal. They are the most severest of my ummah of, on dajjal. Qala, he said, the second thing, Wajaat sadaqatuhum, the sadaqa reached, came to the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Bani Tamim sadaqa came to the Messenger. And the Messenger said, Hadi sadaqatu qawmina. This is the sadaqa of my people. Second. Third, which was what? Um, Aisha used to have a sabiyya. Aisha used to have a slave girl. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ The messenger said to Aisha, اِعْتِقِيهَا Let this girl go. فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ وَلَدِ إِسْمَعِيلَ She is from the children of Ismail. So Abu Huraira stated in this hadith that he loved the people of Bani Tamim for three things he heard from the Prophet ﷺ. So the sheikh was from this tribe. This tribe, Bani Tamim. The Sheikh was born the Hijriya when the year was 1115 Hijriya. He was born 1115 Hijriya in a city called Uyayna. In a city called Uyayna. And it's a city which is very close to Riyadh. Very close to Riyadh. Rather now it's actually getting to the point where it may even enter into Riyadh. That's how it's growing. Uh, Riyadh's growing. What about the way the Sheikh was raised, his seeking of knowledge, and the scholars he took from? So that would be your heading. So the first part's heading would be what? The first part's heading would be his name, his lineage, and when he was born. That would be the first part. The second part would be نشأته وطلبه للعلم وذكر شيوخه, where he, he's right, he's how he grew up, rahimahullah taala. And he is seeking of knowledge and the names of his teachers. So this is, this is what we're going to mention in this part. The Shaykh Rahimullah, he grew up in the house of his father. نَشَأَ فِي حِجْرِ وَالِدِهِ الشَّيْخْ عَبْدُ الْوَهَابِ And his father, كَانَ فَقِيهًا, his father was a jurist. قَاضِيًا, a judge. وَحَفِظَ الشَّيْخُ بْنَ عَبْدُ الْوَهَابِ 
Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahab memorized Al Quran. He memorized the Quran Al Karim, ولم يبلغ العشرة من عمره, and he never reached ten years old. Before he had reached the age of ten, he had memorized the Quran. ودرس على والده, and he studied <coughs> from his father Al Fiqh Al Hanbali, the Fiqh in the Hanbali Madhab. وفي التفسير and he studied the tafsir from his father. والحديث and the science and the hadith and also والعقيده <coughs> the عقيده as well you see so before he had reached the age of 10 he had taken the knowledge he took he took knowledge from who from his father he memorized the quran what happened Uh, wow. Wow. <laughs> so before he had reached the age of 10 he took knowledge from his father meaning he memorized the Quran before he had reached the age of 10 and he took the madhab al-hanbali from his father Naam. Naam. and tafsir and hadith and aqidah he started to take it <laughs> So what you see here is the Sheikh started with a madhab. Rahimahullah. Wa kana al-Shaykh rahimahullah, the Sheikh rahimahullah, shagufan bi kutub al-Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah wal Imam ibn al-Qayyim rahimahumullah. He was one who had excessive love for the books of Ibn Taymiyyah and the books of Al-Imam ibn al-Qayyim rahimahumullah. May Allah be pleased with both of them. <coughs> the Sheikh rahimahullah hajja bayt Allah al-Haram he went for pilgrimage to the Haram and he met the scholars of Mecca and Medina. He met the scholars of Mecca and Medina. And from the scholars he had met was one. The first sheikh he had met was a sheikh Abdullah ibn Ibrahim Al-Sayfin, who was from the people of Al-Sayf. <laughs> His sheikh that he met was a sheikh Abdullah ibn Ibrahim al Saif, And also the great muhaddith, the scholar of hadith, a sheikh al-allamat al-muhaddith, Muhammad Hayat al-Sindi. A sheikh al-muhaddith, Muhammad Hayat al-Sindi. He met him. Waltaqa bi ghayrihima and he also met other than them too. In Mecca. Then after Hajj, he came back to his city. After he came to his city, ثم شد الرحال لطلب العلم And then he embarked on a journey to gain knowledge. So he went to Iraq. He went to Iraq. وكان غالب استفادته And the most benefits he got from Iraq was in Basra. حيث نزل عند الشيخ because he stayed and remained with Shaykh Muhammad al Majmu'i. He stayed with him. Thumma after that, بعد ذلك after that, توجه 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 الشيخ the Shaykh after he had left Basra, the Shaykh directed himself towards Sham. فلم يستطع he was unable to finish that journey. إكمال رحلته he was unable to finish his journey to Sham. فَرَجَعَ So he was forced to go back to Najd. وَفِي طَرِيقِ عَوْدَتِهِ In his way back to Najd, he met, crossed, he came by a place called Al-Ahsa. He came to that place, Al-Ahsa. فَنَاهَلَ مِنْ عُلُومِ عُلَمَائِهَا And so he took from the scholars of that place. He stood over there and he took from the scholars of that place. ثُمَّ رَجَعَ إِلَى Najd. And then after that he went to Najd. So Al Ihsa is in the Saudi Arabia, but it was it's not part of the uh, Najd um, uh, province. So the Sheikh Sheikh Rahimullah came back to his own place. We finished that heading. The third uh, heading, the Sheikh Rahimullah is Dawah, and he's jihad in the sake of Allah. He's Dawah, and the jihad 
of the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kana rahimahullah, the Shaykh as, as, no, as known in his history, he was a the key, a smart one, very smart. Fatila muthabir fi talab al ilm. One who focused on seeking knowledge. With da'wati ila Allah and calling to the path of Allah. Jari'an wa shuja'an fi qawli al haqqi wa raddi al batil. And he was very brave and courageous in saying the truth and refuting the batil, the falsehood. فَكَانَ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ He, رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ, was يُنْكِرُ الْبِدَعَ He would reject the innovation بِشِدَّةٍ with strong, staunch behavior. وَقَدْ ذَهَرَتْ And it became apparent جُرْأَتُهُ his, his bravery and courage فِي إِنْكَارِ الْبِدَعَ In rejecting and refuting the innovation لما دخل البصرة when he entered the city of بصرة لطلب العلم to seek knowledge فأنكر the sheikh started to refuse and reject مظاهر الشرك the symbols of shirk that were apparent بالقبور on the graves وبالموتى and on the dead bodies so the graves and the places what the people would do these building and these constructions that they will build, um, those shrouds that the people would make, Sheikh would take a hard position. Waghairi had other than that, Fa'udi and the Sheikh was then physically harmed from the Rafida in Basra. Wa'ashbahihim and other than them, min abadatil quburi, the grave worshippers. The Rafida and other than them, from the grave worshippers. فخرج من هذا الشيخ لفت بصرة حتى كاد يهلك. The sheikh was close to dying. لولا if it wasn't أن الله عز وجل if it wasn't that Allah سبحانه وتعالى يسر له رجلا. If it wasn't for Allah to make it easy for him to bring a man from أهل زبير from the people of زبير. فحمله he took the sheikh and carried him. She was beaten so badly. He was about to die. This man grabbed the sheikh, put him on his back, and took the sheikh. فحمله, he, he kept the sheikh on his back. فسقاه, he gave the sheikh water. وأطعمه, and he provided him food. ثم after that the sheikh رحله إلى حيث يريد. He then took the sheikh to where he wanted. The sheikh, rahimahullah, he started to advise the people and to teach them. And to refuse the innovation until the wrongdoers, the criminals, the people of corruption, they come, they came together, together in a place called Huraymila to kill him. They came together. The Sheikh remained upon that advice until he went back to his hometown. Uh, he went to a place called Huraymila, and the Sheikh Rahimahullah, the enemies that were against him, they came together and they said we have one enemy that we have to oppose. So they came together to kill him. But Allah destroyed their plotting and their planning. And the Sheikh was then again ordered to leave the place Huraymila. فَخَرَجَ مِنْهَا He left Huraymila and he went to Uyayna, the place where Sheikh was born. Rahimahullah. When the Sheikh came to Uyayna, he met the Amir, the prince of Uyayna. He met the prince of Uyayna. And his name was called Uthman ibn Mu'ammar. Uthman ibn Mu'ammar. That was the prince's name. The sheikh said to the prince, govern the people by their sharia. And he called them to the tawheed. And the sheikh said to him, I can promise you, that Allah is going to give you victory. And Allah is going to make you firm on this earth. If you judge the people and govern them with the Sharia. And you stick hold heartedly on the Tawheed. Ibn Mu'ammar, Uthman Ibn Mu'ammar accepted from the Shaykh his advice. And he promised the Shaykh that he would give him victory. That's what he said to him. So the Shaykh stood up. 
with the permission and the help of who? The prince of the city, the, 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 the place. So, فَبَدَأَ الشَّيْخُ بِمُؤَازَرَةٍ مِنْ إِبْنُ مُعَمَّرٍ So the shaykh, with the support of Uthman ibn Mu'abbar, the shaykh stood up to destroy the trees that the people were worshipping, that they were honouring. He also stood up to destroy the domes of the graves. He also stood up to destroy the um, evil and the munkar, such as the alcohol that were drunk. All of the sheikh would join stream. And he brought back what? Iqamatul Hudud. The sheikh brought back the legislation, the Hudud. He brought Rahimahullah. His story spread. His story? It spread amongst the Najd province. It spread. And the matter, it reached the ruler of Al Ihsa. His name was called what? Sulaiman ibn Muhammad ibn Urayr. And he was from the people of Bani Khalidin. He wrote to who? He wrote to the Amir, the prince. Of where? Of Uyayna, Uthman ibn Mu'ammar. And he ordered him to kill Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salah, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab. He said, kill him. The letter reached the prince of Uyayna, ordering him to do what? To kill the Sheikh. The Amir of, the Amir of Uyayna called the Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salah. He said, come to me. What did the Sheikh do? Sheikh came to him. When the Sheikh came to him, the Amir told him what he was ordered to do. Wakhafa and Uthman ibn Mu'ammar, who is the prince, he was scared of the Hakim of Al-Ihsa. He used to be scared of the, the one that sent him the letter. Why was he scared? Because the ruler of Al-Ihsa used to give Uthman ibn Mu'ammar yearly wages. And he used to give him a budget yearly. And he got scared that if he disobeys him, that this wealth may disconnect from him. That he may not get it anymore. And he also feared that the ruler of Al-Ihsa may come in and destroy his leadership. So what did he do? He deceited the sheikh. And he said to the Shaykh, he said to the Shaykh, go and leave. You're free, I won't do anything to you. When the Shaykh left, he sent after him a Persian man. And he ordered that Persian man to walk behind the Shaykh and kill him. Allah protected him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and no one was able to kill him. The Shaykh ran to a place called Dir'iyah. And the leader of Dir'iyah was who? Al-Imam Muhammad ibn Su'ud. He was the leader of Dir'iyah. Just like the other one was the, a prince there, he was also the prince of Dir'iyah. The Shaykh came to him. And it, he came to Dir'iyah, sorry. And when he came to Dir'iyah, the Shaykh came to Dir'iyah and lived in the house of his who? One of his students. Sheikh stayed in the house of one of his own students, whose name was Ali ibn Abdul Rahman ibn Suwaylim. Ibn Suwaylim. The Sheikh remained with that man. The student honored the Sheikh. And the people of Dir'iyah were coming to the Sheikh in the house of the student in numbers. Waja'a al Amiru, the leader of Dir'iyah came to the house of the student and he gave salams to the Shaykh Muhammad Abdul Wahab and he questioned him. He said, Tell me about your da'wah. What's your da'wah about? The Shaykh told him, The da'wah of Tawheed. And he reminded him of Allah. And he put the hope in him to become the leaders of the Muslimin. 
فَيَجْبَعُ اللَّهُ And he told him that you could be the leader of the Muslimin and Allah may combine for you the religion and also the dunya. You may be able to get religion and you may be also to get what? Um, the dunya. Get a chair. And he also said to him that your lineage, your lineage, huh? will be a lineage who can hold on to this aqeedah that is salafiyya aqeedah to ahli sunnah wal jama'ah Sheikh Muhammad ibn Saud he, his heart just opened for what the Sheikh was saying he liked it and he hugged this opportunity and he gave the Sheikh a sincere promise ala nusrat al tawhid to give victory to tawhid wa da'wati ilayhi and the Sheikh will call to the da'wah فتأسست and from there it was then established دولة السعودية الأولى the first Saudi government and that year was then هجرية at that time was 1158 هجرية what combined in that time الذي اتفق فيه السيف the sword who was carrying the sword? Al-Imam Muhammad ibn Saud Rahimahullah was carrying the sword. And who was carrying the pen and the speech? Al-Shaykh Al-Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab. What did they start with? فَبَدَّأُوا بِالتَّوْحِيدِ They started with the Tawheed. And calling to the message that the Prophet started their religion with. They went into towns, they went into villages, they went into little neighborhoods and they spread the Tawheed. The enemies who, was hate, who hated the Sheikh and who hated his Da'wah started to come together and started to come together and started to come together and they started to wage war against the Sheikh's Da'wah. The Sheikh's Da'wah was, war was waged against him physically, orally, no way was he left alone. When the Hijriya was 1206 and the Sheikh was 91 years of age, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him from this world and the Sheikh died after he saw the da'wah spreading and the khurafat and the shirk being brought down on the ground. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give him a high place in Jannah to Firdaus. The form of the books that the Shaykh Rahimahullah he wrote is Kitab al Tawheed. He also wrote Usul al Thalatha. He also wrote Kashf al Shubuhat. He also wrote Masail al Jahiliya. He also done a Mukhtasar. He abridged Sirat ibn Hisham. The, the biography of Ibn Hisham, he summarized it. Also, the provision of the hereafter. Zad al Mi'ad, he abridged it. There's a book called Usul al Sitta where he talks about six foundations. He has a compa uh, chapters and matters in which he spoke about hadith and also fiqh. So we conclude there, inshallah, in regards to the life of this great Imam, Farahimahullahu, Rahmatan Wasi'ah. May Allah bestow upon him great mercy. Qala Shaykhu al Mujaddidu. Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, rahimahullah. The Sheikh started his book by saying, As'alullah, I ask Allah. Rabb al-Arsh al-Azim, the most merciful, I ask Allah. Rabb al-Arsh al-Azim, the most merciful Lord of the great throne. Ayyatawallaka, to take care of or protect you. Fi dunya in this world. Wal akhirah, and in the hereafter. وَأَنْ يَجْعَلَكَ And to make you blessed, مُبَارَكَ and blessed, أَيْنَمَا كُنْتَ Wherever you are, and wherever you be. وَأَنْ يَجْعَلَكَ And to make you amongst those, مِمَّنْ إِذَا أُعْطِيَ Those who are grateful when provided. إِذَا أُعْطِيَ شَكَرَ وَإِذَا بِتُّلِيَ سَبَرَ And those who are patient when tested. And وَإِذَا أَذْنَبَ اسْتَغْفَرْ And those who repent when they fall into sins 
فإن هؤلاء الثلاثة those three mentioned are عنوان السعادة they are the signs of happiness this is a powerful point the sheikh just mentioned now رحمه الله by starting his book by saying أسأل الله I ask Allah Allah رب أسأل الله الكريم I ask Allah the most merciful رب العرش العظيم Lord of the great throne أن يتولاك to take care and protect you في الدنيا والآخرة and he also went on to say to make you مبارك and blessed أينما كنت wherever you are the Sheikh started his book by making dua and this is the characteristics of a da'i softness kind welcoming the people can all come to you and that's how our messenger was like as Allah said in the Quran in Surah to Ali Imran Ayah 159 Ayah 159 in Surah to Ali Imran Allah says فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ If it wasn't from the mercy of Allah that you became generous to them and kind. It is a mercy from Allah that you became merciful towards them. That you showed them generosity. So the Shaykh here, rahimahullah, his dua also is a result of his mercy. And that's a path that every teacher should take. And every da'iyah Every person who is calling to the path of Allah should take. And every person who is calling to the good, prohibiting the evil, that he's a very soft and generous person to the creation. As Allah said in Surah Al-Anbiya, Ayah 107, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ We have not sent you إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ O Muhammad, we have not sent you except a mercy to all mankind, to all of the creation. To all of the things in the heaven. Allah also said in Surah to Tawbah, Ayah 128, Allah says, Bil rahim. To the believers, you are very generous and kind. Lidalik Ibn al Qayyim, in his, in his book, he mentioned in his Al Kafiyah to Shafiyah, Fil Intisari Lil Firqat al Najiyah, he rahimahullah, he said, about the characteristics of a da'i regard with the people of sinning, sinners, how a da'i is with the sinners, and the people of corruption, this is how they are. The Shaykh Rahimullah he said. That the person should always be consistently in state of fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always crying, scared of Allah. لو شاء ربك if Allah willed. كنت أيضا مثلهم. That you would have been like them. If Allah didn't, if Allah wished, he could have made you just like them. So remember that. And also remember. فالقلب بين أصابع الرحمن. That the hearts are between the. That the hearts are between. The fingers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the Shaykh went on to saying three things. There are the signs of happiness. O oh people, O oh any person who is looking for happiness, these are the only three things you need. One, you are thankful when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives it to you. إِذَا أُطِيَ shakara. When Allah bestows a blessing on you, when Allah gives to you, you are thankful. Because this is a blessing. He gave it to you. And the blessing is by speech, by action, and in the heart. So if Allah has given you this beautiful body of yours, if Allah has given you this mind, then one should be thankful in using it in the right way. Using your limbs in the obedience of Allah is a sign of what? Gratitude. Shukr. It is not true, however much you claim, that you are thankful to what Allah has bestowed upon you. Or you have gratitude. 
in what Allah has bestowed upon you if what he gave you, you are using it in his disobedience. That's the first one. As Allah said in the Quran in Surah Al-Luqman, Ayah 14, and ishkur li, be thankful to me. Have gratitude towards me. Wali wali and your parents. So there, by speech, by action. Also another place Allah also says it, by speech and action. I'malu ala Dawood shukra. Ala Dawood. Do the action of shukr. Come with the action. And Allah also said, وَاشْكُرْ لِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ وَاشْكُرُوا لِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ Have gratitude towards me and don't disbelieve in me. Disbelief, kufr, is the opposite of gratitude. This kufr is kufr ni'mah. Disbelief in the ni'mah that Allah has given you subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah praised his great servants in these characteristics. In Surah Al-Saba, uh, Surah Al-Isra, Ayah 3, Allah said about Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam, Nuh alayhi salam, ذُرِّيَّةَ مَنْ حَمَلْنَا مَعَ نُوح Lineage, generations that came from Nuh alayhi salam. إِنَّهُ he Nuh, كَانَ عَبْدًا shakura. He was a very... Thankful servant to us who came with shukr from who by his action. Rahimahullah. The second sign of happiness is what? Wa either betulia sabar. When you are tested and you are afflicted with pain and you are afflicted with trials and tribulation, that you are patient. You are patient. The three types of patience. The three types of patience. Patience on the obedience of Allah. Also patience from the disobedience of Allah. And the third, patience on that which Allah has created and destined for you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the second thing that if a person comes with, he has received the signs of happiness. The third, which is what? وَإِذَا أَذْنَبَ استغفر. And if you commit a sin, you ask Allah for forgiveness. You come back running to Allah. The sins are two types. إِمَّا مِنَ الصغائر, Either from minor sins or major sins. Whichever sin that they do, they, run, they come running back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah said about them in Surah Al-Imran, Ayah 135, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً They are those who, if they do wrong, أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ Or they wrong themselves. ذَكَرُوا اللَّهَ They remember Allah straight away. فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ And they repent from what they have done. They ask Allah for forgiveness for what they have done. They don't, they're not consistent on the wrong. They remember Allah straight away, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah mentions that. He said after that, وَلَمْ يُسِرُّ عَلَى مَا فَعَلُوا وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ They're not consistent upon the wrong. They run back to Allah. They repent to Allah. Also the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith, Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim both narrated that the Messenger said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَتَبَ عَلَى ابْنُ آدَمْ Allah has written for every person of the children of Adam a portion of zina. Everyone is destined for him a portion of zina. And he will receive that without a doubt. Without him missing it. He's gonna have he's gonna he's gonna fall into a zina. Fazina al the zina of the eye, another is to look. A person who looks at women, a person who watches movies. A man who listens to, or a woman who listens to music clips where they are indecently dressed. And now, well, in Asaf al-Shadeed, all of these other things that they have put out in the open. Inna lillah. 
that the people watch. Pornography. A big man, a Muslim man, will sit in front of a shasha, a screen, and he will watch pornography. Does he not know? The one who created the darkness can see you. Don't you fear him? Allah said about the people, يَسْتَخْفُونَ مِنَ النَّاسِ وَلَا يَسْتَخْفُونَ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَهُوَ مَعْهُمْ إِذْ يُبَيُّتُ لَمَا لَا يَرْضَى مِنَ الْقَوْلِ They are shy of the people. They are concerned that if the people see them, what, what will they probably say? But when it comes to Allah, that isn't even in their agenda. After he took Islam and she found out that he took Islam, Sa'ad al was known in, within the Arab pagans. He was known for his obedience for his mother.